Our next topic is modern C++, which is basically the idea by using newer standards of C++. The first C++ standard was kind of available in 1998, which was a little bit just before the time when I started to learn programming with this first standard. And there have been then changes in 2003. But then in 2011, there were kind of a lot of translations made, a lot of changes, new concepts have been introduced in C++, kind of for the modern age. So this is known as C++0x or C++11. Then in C++14, there have been minor updates, C++17, new features, and C++20 is to come. The rest of the lecture is not considered to be an exhaustive list, but it shows some highlights and the joyful concepts. So let's talk about lambda expressions. A lambda expression is the in-place creation of a function. So the type of a lambda expression is a unique, unnamed, non-union class type. It's called a closure type. This kind of type allows you to store them in a variable similar to the idea of function pointers that we used in C. Here you see an example. I have here a function that returns a string as a type. So this declares our type using this kind of template function returning a string. And this variable func is then stores our lambda. So this here indicates a lambda expression. As an argument, yes, it has nothing. But then we have the function body, which returns hello. So this clearly is the function body of a function that returns a string. And that fits into our func funct kind of variable. It's really great to use this with auto types to reduce the need to specify return. So we can say auto i funct and this one is a lambda function on the right hand side returning 5. And that now you can call i funct here because it's kind of a pointer to this function. Yeah, It's our closure type that stores our function. Um, and then yeah, we, would, we would print, of course, 5, because this function returns 5. So you may wonder why there was this kind of weird bracket notation over here. It's called a capture. What is the capture for? It allows you to see variables outside of the function body, which is really an interesting concept. So let's have a look here. We have a main, our main function, where we declare a variable multiplier. And we set this to 2. Now, by using this capture, we use this ampersand that allows read-write to all variables in the scope. And we give read-write access to the variable multiplier. And then we, we said this function, well, it takes an argument, which is a v of type integer. And then it shall return v times the multiplier. And remember, where what is multiplier? Well, multiplier is 2. It's this variable. So now when I call i func with 6, well, I will get 6 as an actual argument here. And 6 times multiplier, multiplier is 2 at the moment, so it will return 12. So this is really a powerful concept to get some access to some local variables. It's used a lot in different programming languages. It's not possible, in fact, in C that easily. And so it's really a nice concept. Well, equal means you can read variables. Um, yeah, here is an example where you say we want to be able to write variable 1. That's why we use the ampersand. And then we with a comma, we say equal. That means to read all other variables. Yeah, and the arguments is our normal argument list that we provide here. Here we have one argument in V, right? But for void functions, you saw, we can actually omit it. So now you can actually create functions that return functions. And that is a really a functional, from the functional programming languages, a powerful concept. And additional benefits of lambda functions are that you can pass to a function another function. So particularly useful when you try to work on encapsulated data, like you can pass work to the data. And it simplifies this function pointer abstraction in C that we used. You can reuse this local variable to specialize behavior. Here we used our multiplier. Yeah, and I said already functional programming builds on this. Java, 
for example, has a similar feature. So here's now an example how a, fu a, a lambda expression can be used in place of a function. What we have here, we, we try to sort palettes. Okay, what is a palette? Well, we say palette consists of items and these items, they are basically strings. So we have a vector of strings, which are the different items. And well, we give them a weight, the weight is just the length of the string. Yeah, and we can initialize in this class our items um, with a certain vector. So for example, so this is palette. So let's create a vector of palettes. So we create a first palette that just contains one string scorpions. Then we create another palette, dogs, bones, biscuits, cats, food, and toys. And the last palette, computer scientists, routers, and monitors. Now we would try to sort them. So we, we can use here the sort algorithm as part of algorithms in C++. We go over all the palettes. So palettes begin, which is an iterator for our list of palettes. So we go over this palette, this palette, and this palette basically. And uh, here we provide now have to provide a sort function. Now our sort function here is a lambda function. That's why we used our brackets over here. It takes a lambda function takes two arguments. Here we can make them of the type auto because the compiler can in, can automatically deduct what type there should be as part of this function, which is a really a great idea for type inference. And as a body, we say get a get weight is smaller than b get weight. So we try to sort them by weight. And remember the weight of a palette is the number of items on there. Yeah, we could have really changed it, but here we just take the number of items. So we get as a result scorpions, then computer scientists, routers, monitors as a second palette, and the last palette is this one, which has the most items.